Supermarine Spitfire was once considered a symbol of Britain, a brilliant fighter plane admired for its speed and agility. Pilots loved it, and the public called it a war-winning machine. But the truth was, this plane had a major flaw. The engine would shut down during dogfights with German pilots, especially when the aircraft was put into a steep nose dive. On the other hand, the German Luftwaffe's Messerschmitt BF-109 had no such issue, giving German pilots a clear edge during air battles. Britain won the Battle of Britain, but barely, and a big reason for the struggle was this issue with the Spitfire's engine. To win World War II, fixing this bizarre engine flaw was critical. Despite efforts by top engineering firms, no one could solve the problem, until the solution came from the most unexpected person, a woman, Beatrice Tilly Schilling. She did something to the Spitfire that made her one of the unsung heroes credited with helping the Allies win the war. Welcome back, viewers, to another episode. The issue was first noticed in 1938, but wasn't considered serious because pilots didn't perform many nosedives before World War II. But by 1940, during the peak of the Battle of Britain, it became a matter of life or death. The deeper problem was that before World War II, the British government had already produced over 20,000 Spitfires, <laughs> all with the same Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. And it didn't stop there. Other Royal Air Force fighters like the Hawker Hurricane and Bolton Paul Defiant also used the same engine. So now, the Allies were forced to fly defect-prone planes in the middle of a world war. During 1940, Germany was fighting against France and Britain. When the Germans flew in with their Messerschmitt 109s, the RAF scrambled Spitfires in response. Dogfights involved advanced aerial maneuvers, sharp dives, quick climbs, lasting for hours. Now imagine, in the middle of such a fight, if your engine shuts off during a dive, you're a sitting duck. British pilots did have a home advantage. Refueling was easier for them. German pilots had to cross the English Channel, fight, and then fly back home for fuel. That put them at a disadvantage, which may be the reason they couldn't dominate despite Britain's flawed aircraft. So what exactly was the problem? When a plane dives nose first, Gravity pulls everything up, away from the fuel outlet. Unfortunately, in the Merlin engine, the carburetor's fuel outlet was positioned at the bottom. So in a dive, fuel would move away from the outlet, causing the engine to choke or stall. The issue was so technical that even the best engineers at Rolls-Royce and the Royal Aircraft Establishment couldn't solve it. Cyril Lovesey and A.D. Fisher tried several complex solutions, and all failed. They even created new problems. And then in 1940, a woman named Tilly Schilling stepped in. Back in 1938, during early Spitfire test flights, Tilly had rebuilt her favorite machine, a 490cc Norton motorcycle on which she became the fastest woman racer at Brooklyn's racetrack. She wasn't just a skilled rider. She was a brilliant engineer. At just ten years old in 1919, she wanted to join her sisters on cycling trips, but felt left out, so she started saving money for a motorcycle. By fourteen, she bought a two-stroke Royal Enfield, and by fifteen, she could disassemble and rebuild her bike herself. By 1924, society didn't even imagine women becoming engineers, but Tilly didn't let that stop her. With help from the Women's Engineering Society, she got admission in 1929 
to Victoria University of Manchester in electrical engineering, the first woman ever in that department. She later focused on thermodynamics and mechanical engineering, which was her true passion. And at Brooklyn's, she wasn't just racing men. She was beating them. She had modified her Norton bike's carburetor to give it a stunning acceleration advantage. Back to World War II. Before the war began, Schilling had already spent three years at the Royal Aircraft Establishment, mainly doing technical documentation. By November 1939, she was promoted to technical officer, responsible for carburetor research and development. When other engineers failed, she asked for permission to work on the Spitfire engine issue. At first, many underestimated her because she was a woman. But in just a few days, she stunned everyone by solving the issue so effectively that authorities laughed in disbelief, in admiration. So what did she do? She designed a tiny brass restrictor plate with a precise hole diameter which regulated fuel flow during dives. Once installed, the engine no longer stalled during nose dives. Uh, the best part? This little plate could be installed directly on the aircraft without disassembly. Fast, though, and efficient. Now came the challenge of installing it across all fighter planes. Tilly took her Norton motorcycle and traveled from base to base installing the solution in Spitfires and Hurricanes herself. Her fix worked so well it was nicknamed Miss Schilling's Orifice. It didn't completely fix the issue, but reduced the problem dramatically enough to give pilots a fighting chance. Later, she worked on an entirely new carburetor for the Merlin engine, permanently solving the problem. After the war, pilots gave her credit for saving their lives, and she was awarded the Order of the British Empire, OBE. Instead of retiring, Schilling went on to work on cutting-edge military tech, rocketry, ramjets, and guided weapons. By 1955, she became senior principal scientific officer at the Royal Aircraft Establishment. Tilly Schilling wasn't just a mechanic or an engineer. She was a trailblazer, opening the doors of engineering for women across Britain and beyond. To this day, historians agree. If Schilling hadn't fixed the Spitfire, the course of World War II might have been very different. We hope you enjoyed this incredible story. Please like, share and comment, and we'll see you in the next amazing video.